All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amar Gowda. I'm a program manager in the messaging and the serverless team. It's, we are basically an extension to engineering team. We work very closely with customers, top Microsoft uh, customers, and bring in the feedback and the insights to the engineering team to get a few things prioritized. All right, so today we are here to look at what is the common thing customers come in with the Kafka requirements coming into Azure, what we have seen as a trend lately. And Kafka is a very hot topic. I'm sure that's, that's why you all are here to listen what this is about. So with that, I would love to start with what Kafka is and go over some core concepts of Kafka. Then we'll go over and look at a typical scenario, a canonical example, rather, of customers coming in with this requirement. So uh, Kafka is an open source Apache uh, software. So it's a distributed streaming platform. So I say streaming, uh, that's very important, and distributed, two terms, and I'll elaborate what that really means, because there's a whole lot of confusion when it comes to message broker and the equivalent of message brokers, uh, which are uh, the service bus, the RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ, and all of those, and how different is Kafka, and how, how do you do both in the streaming? So it's primarily designed for a streaming type of requirements. Uh, so what it really means is uh, it's, a, it's a commit log. It's a, it's a distributed log. You can capture the logs and do the processing that is required to do this. Uh, it can be also used as a messaging, and I'll go over some more details about how, how those, those things are done. You can also use this as a typical pub sub type of an application when you're bringing uh, microservices into the picture or if you're trying to do asynchronous processing, which is very typical with any message broker system. Uh, end of it, which is mainly, is the stream processing itself, how you could do the streams coming in from IoT devices and a lot of other telemetry that is getting generated, pushed into Kafka, uh, and do the downstream processing. So uh, what are the key things and the terminologies that are really important? You as a going to be a Kafka, Kafka, coming in with Kafka requirements are. So all the messages go into something called as topics. Topics is where the messages are stored. Behind the topics, they have partitions. That's how you manage where the things are going. And it gives you more throughput as well, based on how many partitions you have. Keep that in mind. And a producer is someone who's sending a message. A consumer is someone who's polling or who's consuming the message. Okay, the messages are not pushed out automatically. You consume, you poll for the messages. Uh, brokers are literally more of endpoints which you connect to, uh, and they could be multiple brokers in a in a Kafka environment. And you just ask for a broker, or you can connect a broker. But if you ask for it, it's going to give you the list of brokers and the and the topics, and you can connect to the topic from your uh, consumer or the producing side. Uh, messages are. Uh, Something it's stored in more of a key where value, value obviously, a key where it says, hey, who you are, what type of message, the body of the message, it'll go into the value itself. And with that, there's a date and time stamp, which is very important how the sequence of uh, ordering is kept, no matter if you're in multiple partitions. So I'll go over a few more things here. So obviously, Kafka is such a, such a popular platform that most of the uh, the Fortune 500 companies, especially the banking and everyone else, have already embraced Kafka and they've deployed huge, massive clusters managing and throughput. It all started from LinkedIn, by the way, so that's that's where the things started and Confluent uh, started contributing a whole lot of stuff in here. So the key concepts of what Kafka offers is you have a consumer API, you have a producer APIs. This is this is how, and you have a streams uh, API, which is which is a very optimized, very high throughput uh, type of a scenario, which you're trying to tap into the topics, which have a lot of messages coming in, and you consume those messages. Uh, very low latency kind. Uh, Kafka is a TCP protocol by itself, by the way, just like AMQP is and other equivalent of that. So it is. Uh, it works on a TCP protocol. So it has automatically a few other good things that come with TCP. Uh, one other thing is the connectors. So connectors are something that have a pre-built logic in them to reconnect, like you build a SQL server uh, sync to a Kafka topic. So they, whenever there is an interruption, they connect and reconnect back. There's all, all retry logics built into those connectors. So there's a lot of extensions. You can continue to build on connectors and extend your applications uh, to do more from different data sources as well. 
Okay, let's go over uh, how the, the topic and the consumer group, uh, then we can jump over on obviously uh, how it's gonna look like on Azure and what are the key things customers come with. So, so the key thing here, as I mentioned, is uh, the topics and the partitions that go in how the things are done. The partitions will keep your real messages, and the partition can be in different brokers. Uh, it could be spread out between different servers for high throughput. Uh, and also, uh, when you read back from the partition, you can create something called a consumer group. Hey, I'm a consumer group A. Give me all the messages that belong to me. So if you're a new consumer, it's going to start the cursor from wherever it was, the, where the start, of, start of the messages, and it will keep going once the co consumer group empties. So if you have a microservice or different consumers listening to the same type of messages, put them in a group, so they literally, if a consumer A reads a message, then it's already a red message. The consumer B will read the next message in the line. So that's what the concepts of consumer groups mean. If you want a consumer attached to a topic and doing so, if you build architecture like that, you would have to attach uh, one consumer to one consumer group and continue to consume the messages. So multiple microservices tapping into uh, the same message and reacting to that message can be done through uh, having dedicated consumer groups per microservice. Okay, so let's also look at what, what are the core features that come out of box with Apache uh, Kafka itself. And there's a lot of activity from Confluent and other OSS uh, add-ons that you can bring. Uh, so the key thing here is, so uh, item potency producer, which is exactly one message. So your producer, when there's a disconnect, when it tries to send a message, then it comes back, it's not gonna produce the same duplicated message again. So that's handled by Kafka. It knows that you were the producer before, now you're coming back because you got disconnected. So that is really important uh, feature. Uh, there, are, uh, there are other most important features that come into uh, is uh, size-based retention, which is very important. Uh, if you want to keep the messages uh, based on a size and a delete all the messages past seven days, which is pretty standard, or keep the messages for so long based on the size, you have all of those configurations you could do. Uh, and you have something called replicas, which is what tells you, hey, do you, we want me to, just for the DR and HA, I need to copy that messages over to multiple clusters, multiple regions, and there is something called uh, acts setting. You would set that to say, do you want a sync replica, which is gonna take a little longer in giving back the acknowledgement to the producer, or you do a asynchronous sync back into multiple uh, replica partitions. So those are all the features that come with Kafka itself. So this is all about core Kafka. I'm not talking anything related to Azure yet. Okay, so let's kind of dive into what are the common scenarios or what are the common requirements people with Kafka requirements come in. So the most popular people always do is the, the stream processing. It could be something you're tracking website activity, you're trying to do ATM transactions or a uh, lot of activities in the banking that are happening at different regions. You're trying to bring all of that into one pipeline and try to do some AI and some learning to detect early uh, uh, problems with your credit card, or it could be anything else. So that's, that's all comes into stream. Even IoT comes into the same stream processing as well. A lot of devices coming in. Uh, you're looking at a sliding window of what events have happened. You push it up uh, into a topic, or you bring topics from different locations or different centers and do some downstream processing. That's very typical. Uh, interestingly, people also use Kafka as a storage system itself, right? Uh, if you have a transaction log, you want to keep the transaction log for seven years or beyond that because of some compliance reasons. People tend to put it, can keep it in the Kafka topics for longer, and they get a chance to replay it. Uh, if you're doing a reconciliation, a yearly uh, accounting, some, they could do a reconciliation again and replay all the messages back and make sure the, the tally has happened, right? So that's another big scenario we have always seen uh, with Kafka. Uh, enterprise messaging, there are really better solutions out there, but people tend to keep it, when they come with cloud agnostic type of an approach and they wanna keep it to one system, one message broker, uh, one application doing multiple things, they tend to go with Kafka and also do the pub sub uh, and Microsoft orchestration uh, also. Like, hey, I, I finished my message, I'm gonna drop another thing to the topic Another, another microservice picks it up. I did my job. I'm going to pass it to the next one. So a typical message broker roundabout is also done on Kafka. We have seen that, but not a whole lot than what we have seen on the other two. All right, so let's, let's look at some scenarios. 
Uh, before that, I want to kind of introduce what a Lambda architecture is. This is, so we have Lambda architecture and Kappa architecture. This is all based on how you process the messages or streams, right? So the key thing here with, uh, with Lambda architecture is you have a hot path, you have a cold path, right? So, so the, the batch layer is the cold path and the speed layer is the hot path. So the, we use the terms uh, in a mixed way. So what the speed layer means is at real time, at a sliding window of a minute, three minutes or five minutes, I'm looking at how the messages are coming in and doing some real-time analytics, real-time viewing of my dashboard to tell what is happening. So this, they can throw it out into uh, uh, Grafana or Power BI or any other solutions for front-end viewing of the things and also put some AI in there to de detect some things that you can flag them. Uh, the batch layer or the cold path is, hey, you have all of these records, I'm going to pass these records uh, kind of put it in a column store for my data retention purposes, or I'm going to do some other offline learning based on this. So that's a hot path. So that's a that's a key concept with Lambda architecture. Kappa is uh, basically only the speed layer, and everything you happen to do it is in the speed layer. There's nothing really storing anything on the speed layer. You're just looking and reacting to the things. So that's an important concept on the Lambda. So I'll build the slide um, and then talk through. OK, so uh, the key thing about stream processing is it's data is always moving. Okay, it's, You cannot go back and say, hey, give me this. It's not a SQL query on a, on a column store. So this is about, hey, at this time, experience from what happened, g compare that to what happened minus five minutes or plus five minutes, and tell me and give some insights about how you can react to it. That's what it really means. Uh, <coughs> so. Uh, the key other thing is uh, the engine would also tell you what, what's happening. You should process the data in a particular format. How do you, you want to react to those messages and put it out there in a downstream process? It's all up to you. You, you don't have to react to everything that's coming in the stream. You look at what is an exception that doesn't fall into the bounds and then act on it. And that's when you're going to start triggering and putting that in a column store or note that as an exemption. Exception, rather. All right, so let's let's look at how a typical architecture. So this is a map of what customers come in with and what are the type of Azure solutions they tend to lean towards or try to use it. And I'll also bring up a next slide which talks about a typical scenario we have seen with customers. So people tend to always have a Kafka cluster on-premises. So it's a more of a uh, come with some existing on-prem requirements. It's not a greenfield. It's more of a brownfield type of uh, projects. Uh, and they want to pump those messages to Azure to do some downstream processing and bring the best what the cloud gives you. So they tend more lean towards my mirror maker, which is a very powerful uh, uh, mirroring solution for taking multiple topics, combining topics, and pushing it up to another Kafka cluster. Uh, if you want to do a, a disaster recovery on Kafka, you would also use mirror makers to replicate the messages across different locations. So we have off we have different ways you can run typical. People tend to go with event hubs first, uh, with the pass approach, and then expand towards uh, either HD inside uh, Kafka offering, uh, or even try to do their own with VMs, or even people are exploring a lot on AKS. We've seen that trend where people want to containerize and run a state application, state-based application, which is Kafka is, into a stateless type. So there are a lot of nuances, and you need to watch out when you're running it at scale on uh, Kubernetes, uh, but it is definitely doable. And this is the same Lambda architecture you have seen, where is the cold path. You would put that in the capture, event hubs capture and put it on the storage for downstream processing. You would write an Azure Data Factory uh, flow to it to transform those messages and read through it, and also use uh, Databricks, which is an uh, extension of uh, Spark as well. Um, on, the, on the hot path itself, Azure Stream Analytics, uh, which doesn't actually attach to a Kafka as a protocol, but Azure Stream Analytics, I put an asterisk, but it connects to e uh, Event Hubs really well because it listens on AMQP for doing some real-time hot, hot path analytics. And you can also do that sliding window and fire off an Azure Functions, what you want to do and how you want to react to that or any other downstream applications. Uh, any of those, as I said, exceptions will go into the serving layer itself, which could be a column store or not a column store. Could be a Cosmos DB, just dump a document that what happened. Uh, you would throw it out in a serving layer, which happens to be uh, the top people will come up with is either Grafana or they want to go with the more Microsoft native approach with Power BI. So that's a very, very typical approach. 
And let's look at how in real uh, this would look like with a, with a customer uh, we worked with, and this is a very canonical example. So this was all about doing predictive scaling on AKS. So this is a media services company who streams everything, and all the streaming comes from the uh, AKS itself. Uh, this is all about, hey, someone is going to watch uh, Game of Thrones at X period of time. How do I make sure I scale it up? Is it at the ti time of the start, or is it people want to tune in uh, differently? So all of that predictive scaling, they wanted to put some machine learning algorithm and do how the trend is looking like, and then pre-provision the things. So the way they do it is they were pushing all of those messages back into on-premises. Like, yeah, you open the cell phone, you open the app, or in the TV, wherever you're watching, all of those telemetry was coming into their on-premises. Uh, they were aggregating that and pushing it up to uh, event hubs to do the downstream processing. They built off a model which was learned on the cold path, but they put it back on the hot path to do some real-time sliding window analytics and say, hey, now we need to start triggering uh, the autoscaler for AKS. Uh, this this was a very common example, and the example we have seen here is this this the way they do it in the cold path and hot path for doing downstream processing. Uh, this customer was a multi-customer. They wanted to open it up uh, through a Grafana interface to tell their customers or, or CDN providers that hey, look, this is the bandwidth. These are the exceptions we are seeing. This is how much we have scaled up and scaled down, and those are those are the real-time things they wanted to see, where this Grafana was able to. Uh, plug into the hot path itself and consume the messages. Uh, so that was, that was this was a very typical scenario. So with that, uh, I wasn't sure. OK, good. So I'm doing good with the time. All right, so, so this is my last slide. This was a 20 minute, and I'll, I'll, I'll be off, uh, off stage if you have any questions, any requirements uh, as well to discuss more about how we can help you. Uh, so Things you need to know, really, that are very important for you when you're thinking of uh, Kafka in your architecture now, or you're trying, trying to come to Azure, right? So, HA and DR, there is no built-in built-in way of doing it. Mirror Maker or uh, Uber has a replicator, or even uh, LinkedIn is out uh, open sourcing Brooklyn, which is a very very high scale uh, uh, Mirror Maker type of an approach. Consider those; th those are the only options there. Uh, so the big thing about Kafka is a very high latency, high throughput type of uh, application. So it could be really helpful if you're streaming in a lot of data. Okay. Um, so uh, if you're looking at the using Kafka as a pure queuing or a pub sub type, uh, do do some more research to see if Kafka is the right fit or not. Because there are definitely better solutions out there, but people go with one over the other. Just keep in mind RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ, Service Bus, all of these are great offerings because they have a poison queue, they have guaranteed delivery, um, so you can lock the message when you're processing. So there are a lot of good things that uh, the, the things come with. Here you have to handle it yourself. Uh, authentication, this, this is also a different, deeper topic you need to discuss if you're running this or exposing it externally uh, uh, applications. If it's not working in a VNet or a secured env en environment, there are a lot of considerations there. Um, one last thing is uh, people, if you, if you really want to keep it to a cloud agnostic approach, uh, Kafka, Kafka is a good answer to start with, right? So if you want to build something that you can uh, do a host or a push a CI CD pipeline that deploys to multiple cloud providers, it's the same application, uh, this, is, uh, this is the way to do it. Uh, and I've, we have always seen customers come in with, hey, I want to build a solution that is cloud agnostic. That's a very common pattern these days especially with the top Azure customers, and we tend to, uh, okay, so this is your approach. Either they come with, hey, we have a pre-existing requirements, or we want to build something that can help us deploy it in multiple cloud. Uh, either way, uh, these, are, these are the things to watch out for. Uh, with that, this was my last slide. I, I didn't have a demo or anything. It was, it was a 20-minute session, obviously. Thank you. So. Get in touch with me if you have a requirement or if you have a, if you if you have an active customer you're working with who have this need or thinking of coming into Kafka, we can help you. We have a team which will come and sit with you, code with you, learn what's working and not working, and take it back to engineering. All right. Thanks everyone.